Hi everybody, my name's Frances and today I'm going to take us through a basic level reformer class um, using the Allegro One reformer here today. Um, but yeah, it's applicable on any brand of reformer that you might have at home and let's start and have a great time together. So what we're going to begin with is just a little bit of um, bridging on the reformer. So I'm going to choose two red springs for myself, but that's pretty tough on the back of the legs. So if you do find that it's a little strong, um, perhaps go with three red springs or two reds and a blue, and that will give you just a little bit more support. And then for me, I also really like to have my foot bar geared all the way close to the reformer for this exercise. Um, I've got pretty good ability and range of movement in my hips. Um, so I, I prefer it a little closer, but if you are a taller person or um, you are finding that that angle of folding your hip joint is too much, then maybe take it out one little hole or two holes and just find that happy place for yourself. All right, so we're going to lay down, making sure the headrest is flat, and we're going to have our heels hip distance apart on the foot bar there. And we'll just start with some breathing. So we're going to take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And we're going to keep that breathing going. And we're just going to start to really feel what part of our trunk and pelvis is touching the carriage that we're lying on. Noticing which parts are heavy versus which parts feel light. And tuning into our pelvic alignment. We want our hip bones and our pubic bone in neutral pelvis alignment. So level with the floor there. The natural curve of your lower back is in position. And we want to feel like the collarbones are just gently rolling back and our sternum is lengthening towards our chin and our eye gaze is directly to the ceiling so that we feel like we've got the ability to press down into the back of the shoulders and the back of the arms. So we're going to inhale to prepare for imprinting. And on our exhale, we're going to just pivot around that hip joint to just roll the lower back towards the carriage. And inhale, come back to neutral. And then exhale and imprint again. So it's a really small movement. It's different for everybody's body. And you want to make sure that it's a movement that's happening at the hip joint. So right where that part of the, the leg bone is sticking out to the side the most. That's where you want to get that hip pivot from. And then feel that the, the pelvis and the spine are able to just get closer towards the carriage. Now we're going to go into that imprint and keep thinking of that pivot of the hip joint to roll the spine all the way up into our pelvic curl. Breath in at the top and breath out. Let's roll back down. Keep thinking of that pivot at the hips rather than pushing our spine down into the bed. Inhale at the bottom, finding neutral. And exhale, think of the hips to roll and tuck the sitting bones up into the back of the knees, curling the rest of the spine gently off the carriage, trying to stay pulled forwards right onto that stopper. Breath in at the top and breath out. Let's roll back down again. So just... Moving through that articulation of the spine, nice and easy, trying to feel the back of the legs, constantly closing up those springs as much as is possible. Trying not to fall into the back of the neck. You want to still feel like there's buoyancy and lift in the trunk and then roll back down. Keep thinking about that pivot under of the hip joint. Good, let's do two more maybe so we can hold ourselves up there, rolling all the way up to the top. Keep thinking of the legs in line with the hips, not letting the knees knock together. And then back down, let's stay up on that next one. Inhale, finding neutral, Oop, pulling the carriage close, mine's moved a little, and then roll all the way up to the top. So up at the top, you want to think about your sitting bones coming right up into the front of your thighs, your knees reaching forward and down toward the front of the shins, breath in, and on our breath out, we're just going to twist and twist and twist. So tiny little pelvic rotations. Keep thinking about the hips pivoting under, sitting bones up into the front of those thighs there. 
and we've got four and three. My hamstrings are definitely starting to say hello. And two, I go still to the ceiling, last set. Find your hips nice and square at the top and then let's roll back down again. Let's go up one last time there now. So we're going to peel under into imprint. Make sure those springs are all the way closed up. We might hold at the top, really press down heavy to the arms and the back of the shoulders. And then the right leg, you're just going to pivot at the hip joint, pull it into the chest and down. Same leg and in and down. Good job. So we're going to keep that going for three more on this side. Keep constantly thinking about that pivot under with the pelvis, pressing down into the back of the arms, not falling into the throat. Last one. And then we swap. So we've got our left leg and our standing leg is really important here. So keep thinking about reaching that right knee over the front of the shin there. Let's do three. Good job. Keep closing up those springs. Two. Last one. Placing it back down again. Breath in at the top and breath out. Let's curl the spine all the way back down. Beautiful job. So we might move into some chest lift here just in our warm up. Interlace the hands behind the head. Really think about a broadness through the upper back like the tip of the shoulder blades is really hugging around the side of the ribs and reaching out through the pointy parts of your elbows. Let's inhale here. Exhale, first lift the head like you could slide a little piece of paper underneath it. Pivot at the ears, curl at the neck and then keep that sensation of curl going forward and then unravel to get back down. So let's go again. We're going to lift the head just off the head block. We're going to pivot at the ears. We're going to curl at the throat and the neck and we're going to keep that forward curling message as we go forward, forward, forward and then back down. So keep going. It sounds like a lot of detail for lifting your head up, but actually the start of how we get that forward bend in our spine right from the base of our skull all the way down into the belly is what's going to make the most efficient work for your abdominals here. So it's really worth taking the time. Lift, pivot at the ears, curl and bend at the throat and the neck and roll forward. Keep reaching the elbows broad and then back down. Let's stay up. Last time here, lift the head, pivot at the ears, curl at the neck, Roll forward like you're a little fern rolling into yourself. Hold there. We're going to do our hula now. So breathe in there. And then twist from the chest and rotate towards the opposite hip. And come back to the center. And twist. And come back to the center. And twist. So keep going and imagining that your pelvis is going downhill toward those springs. Super heavy and wide. Woo, this is starting to warm up my front line. Well done. Keep thinking of the head and the neck curling down also in towards the belly button. Brilliant. One more to each side, everybody. Hope that you're starting to feel this too. Last one. And come back to the center and let's lower the head down. Just hold on to the pegs behind yourself. Take the legs up to the tabletop. Feel almost like you're pulling the pegs apart with the broadness of your shoulder blades. Really finding neutral pelvis alignment, shins parallel to the floor. And we're going to twist to the right and center. So feel the twist coming from the waistline. Not letting one or um, either of the knees slide past each other. And keep thinking about that sternum reaching up toward the face and the eye gaze directly to the ceiling as if you're wearing giant false eyelashes that can go all the way to the ceiling. Good job, really twisting from the waist so the pelvis and legs go in one piece to each side. Last one to each direction. Last one. 
Good. And now we're going to place the feet back down again. Just reach the two legs over the bar. See how we go here. See if we can curl up to change our springs over. All right, we've got leg and footwork now. So I'm going to select three red springs and a blue spring. So that's all of them except for the yellow. But if you like it a little stronger, you can go for all of the springs. Or if you feel like the spring load pushes you around too much for you to control your technique, always better to go on the lighter side. You don't want the brute force of the springs to prevent you from having the control in your alignment that you want because otherwise really you're not going to get the results that you're after because a different muscular pattern will occur just for you to battle to stay on the machine. So absolutely, if you feel like you're getting pushed around by the springs, drop it back and you'll notice that you get even quicker results um, by strengthening in that pathway. All right, so we're going to lie down again. We're going to put our heels up onto the bar, hip distance apart, and you kind of don't want it to be right on the back edge of the heel. You want it to be just in front of the ankle joint. Yeah, so at the lateral arch of your foot or the side arch of your foot, just in front of your ankle bone, that's actually where you want to have your feet on the bar. Yeah, so that's going to be a much better placement. We're going to inhale there. Exhale, straighten the two legs out. And inhale, come back home. And exhale, straighten the two legs out. So keeping that going, you want to think again about just folding at the hip joint and making this a real translation of foot and hip intelligence and the knees just being a real carrier of that energy line. So don't really think about bending and stretching your knees. Thinking about folding and lengthening the hips is going to be a better way to go. Let's do two more. I like to imagine that I'm lying on a, on a bed that's not level, that it's inclining downward actually toward the springs. So I'm sloping downward towards my pelvis, towards my feet, and feeling super light through the chest and pressing through the arms so that my hips can truly have the control of that spring load. One more time. And then let's come back home and we're going to shift to our toes on the bar. So balls of the toes on the bar, and you want to make sure that all 10 of your little toe balls are represented on the bar. If the baby ones are hanging off, then it means you've got your toes too far down. You don't want to grab the bar with your toes, you want to actually rest on it with the balls of your toes. So we're going to lift our heels up quite high and keep the ankle joint still where it is in space, and then fold at the hip joint to press and return, and fold to press, and return. So keep that going, making sure you get to notice what the end point feels like. So you don't want to come back in before you felt what it's like to fully open those springs up, fully open the hip joint out, because that's really going to inform how you get to the, the maximum mobilization in your hip joint rather than being stuck in mid-range the whole time. So if we can keep our ankle joint relatively still, then the hips are going to work even harder to control the load, which is what we're aiming for here. Three. And two, still thinking of that downhill slope. Last one. And then come back home and we're going to go to the V position straight away. So a little Pilates V. You want the angle of your feet to match the angle of your thighs. So you don't want to have a little V of the feet but then have the knees falling out too wide. Think of the knees more in line with your armpits, in line with your shoulders. Be fairly lifted through your heels and then feel the inside of your heels pressed together. And then we're just pressing again from that same pivot at the side of the hip joint. So just keep reminding yourself where your hip joint is sitting. It's actually not in that front fold that you might be imagining. And if you think about coming lower down the legs and pivoting from down there, you'll find it's way easier to keep your neutral pelvis, actually. Let's go four. And three. Really straightening the legs and feeling the kneecaps slide up toward the front of the hips. 
and two, and one. And then let's go for our heels out wide. So we want to think about heels kind of in line with the shoulders. And again, the angle of the foot and the thigh matching up. And we're sitting again at the front of the ankle joint with our weight here. So we're going to inhale again. Exhale, press. And press. Good. So really noticing that you're able to control that load with your legs rather than feeling a lot of congestion happening in the pelvis, in the trunk. You're able to feel like you're pushing down through your feet and away with the crown of the head in the opposite direction here. And press for three. And two. And coming in just as important as pushing away. So really not letting the machine fall back to the stopper. Last one. And then let's finish with our toes out wide as well. So all 10 of our toes represented on the bar, the toe balls, that is not just the toes themselves. Lift up the heels. Keep that ankle position relatively stable. And then hip work to press. And just thinking of that pivot in that joint is going to give you all of that muscular balance that you need. You don't need to think about squeezing your hamstrings or squeezing your bottom. You want to think heavy, broad hips and mobile at that, that femoral joint. Beautiful. So I'm getting really lovely and warm. I hope you guys are as well. Let's do four. Really feeling the end point each time, stretching those springs open more than you think is left in your body. And two, last one. And then we'll come back to the toes hip distance apart for me. Parallel, making sure your parallel is the outer edge of your foot parallel. And then the knees kind of pushed open slightly so they're central to the hip joint as well. So we're gonna push out to two long legs. And then we inhale, the heels go down. Exhale to come up for the raise and lower and lift. And I like to think about my whole foot really massaging to go down through the heels rather than just dropping into the back of the ankle joint. Think of that downhill of the pelvis and the feet like you're lying on an incline board. And three, press. And two, making sure we get all the way up to the top. Last one. And let's prance now. And prance. And prance. Again, really working through the ankle mobilization, feeling the change in angle at the hip joint as well. And the pelvis stays really still and neutral. Let's go four. And three, less of a bounce, more of an ooze. And two, last one. And let's come all the way back in. Whew, that's definitely got me warm. Reach the arms up to the ceiling. Let's curl and come up and changing our springs. So for my um, lying down abdominal work, I'm gonna go for a red and a blue spring. If you'd like it a little stronger, you can go for two red. Or if you're feeling like it's too strong for your shoulders, maybe a red and a yellow, or even just a red if that's what you prefer. So I'm going to pick up the smaller loops into my hands. And I'm going to start with my knees quite close into my chest. And we're starting with tension on the strap but not pulling the springs open at all okay for me today that's how I like to start my chest lift so we're just going to work with the arms initially I want you to still feel like that pelvis is going downhill towards the springs but the knees are able to draw right in towards you you're going to exhale pull the arms down and lift them back up exhale press down and lift them back up and you still want to think about pulling just the arms down as opposed to your whole chest really pushing back into the carriage. 
that's not really going to work your upper body and your upper back as um, balanced as you would like it to be. So making sure that when you go to move your arms, you're not pushing extra weight backwards of your trunk into the carriage. And you may not even be aware that you're doing that, but just check in and see what your uh, body is defaulting to. So the same amount of lightness on the carriage and then the arms pull down. And let's go for five and press and four. Keeping the sternum really long up towards the, the eye gaze. And you'll notice that if you are pushing into your upper back, you probably are dropping your chin. So that's a good sign if you're able to keep your head and neck alignment the same as you do your arm press. Here's our last one and we're staying there. Turn the hands to face the thighs. We go out to the side and pull home and out to the side. And you'll notice I'm going on a, a little diagonal. I'm not going directly to the side. I'm going slightly up and away. And that, that line is, I'm choosing that position because that's where my shoulder blades are able to stay flat on my rib cage at the back of my body. And two, and pull. Good, and last one, and pull. Now combination, one up, one down, and open, and close. So really trying to find just again that movement at the shoulder joint, that coordination with the shoulder blades and no extra tension through the trunk. Just getting that shoulder girdle to glide as it should is going to bring on all the right muscles for you. Last one. Let's now add our chest lift. So we're going to take our arms up to the top and we're going to think about pulling the arms as we just did, but adding the head lift the curl at the ears, the curl at the neck, the forward bend of the whole spine, and back down again. Same thing, lift the head, curl at the ears, bend at the neck, reach forward, and lower down. Last one in preparation for the 100, curl. Really feel like you're stretching down into those straps. Adding the legs as well now. Lift the head, curl. Feel that the body reaching forward, forward, forward is enough to propel the legs away. Bend the knees in, raise the arms, lower the head. And this is our hundred progression. Reach and in. Two more and reach and in. And I keep thinking of a continuous forward bend. I am not thinking about pushing my spine back into that carriage at all. Last one. And curl. And we're going to come up and hold for the 100. If you can't manage to have the two legs long, then feel free to have the knees in. So just start pumping. You could be here. You could then do one leg at a time coming out if that's where your strength level is at at the moment. Or you could do both legs going out and in. Or we could just stay. So breathe and pump. Really think about the forward bend of the spine pushing you forward towards your hips and your hips pushing your feet away from you like you're going to launch yourself over that foot bar. One more breath. Woo! And coming on down. Okay, what we're going to move into now is our feet into the straps. So... I'm going to just change my spring a little heavier, I think. So I'm going to peel up. Oh, that is tough after the 100. Okay, I like two red springs for my feet in the straps. But again, you might like it a little lighter than that. So red and blue could be a good option for you there. We're going to lay ourselves down. We're going to put our feet into the longer loops now. And the brilliant thing is... When we did our leg and foot work, I talked to you about where the bar should sit across your foot, just in front of the ankle joint, right at the outer edge where that arch is. And it's the same for our straps. We don't want to have our strap halfway up our foot or near our balls of our toes. We're going to get the best hip work if we can place the straps in that position. So frog, let's start with the knees bent in but you only want to come in as far as you're able to keep your neutral pelvis alignment. 
So if you start to feel like your bottom's lifting, you've got some air under that tailbone there, then just see if you can push the knees further away and get that same idea of maybe inclining down towards your hips. And then we're going to press out and in and out. And in. And I like to think of this almost the same as the little V leg and footwork. So I'm feeling like it's a bend and stretch at this pivoting line of my hip joint. Keeping the shins a little lifted. Let's go three and two. Still lovely and light in the chest so we can be heavy to the arms. One more time there. Good. And now we're going to go into our circles. So we're going to go down a little lower, circle out to the side, back around to the top, and press, and circle, and press. So again, it's a mobilization that is coming from this hip joint, and you want to find the real corners of the hip joint. Not that there really is corners, but if those hip joints were mixing bowls, you want to really scrape the edges of the mixing bowl as much as you possibly can. Last one, then let's reverse it. And let's go out to the side together and down. And also what I'm thinking of is the amount of turnout that I've got in my legs is pretty similar to the little Pilates V position we did our froggy in. And I'm not increasing that or decreasing that at any part of the circle. I am keeping that same turnout. Last one. Oh, beautiful. Okay, now what we're going to do is short spine. So I definitely want you to make sure your headrest is flat if it wasn't already. Same spring, and you might want to just shuffle down just a little there. Bend the two knees into the frog start position, and we're going to press away. We're going to fold the legs over until you get to the stop up. Now, for you, if the roll all the way up to the shoulder blades isn't something that suits your body, you're just going to bend your two knees in, roll the tailbone back down, and then push away again. Okay, so that's our short spine preparation. But otherwise, here's our full short spine together. We press, we fold, and I've got pretty tight hamstrings, so I don't get to the stopper without my bottom lifting a little. That's completely fine. And then we roll up onto the shoulder blades and we keep doing that by thinking about pivoting our pelvis under and then standing forward into the straps, bend the knees into the frog and curl the spine back down the same way that we did our pelvic curl earlier. So from the pivot of the hips rather than pushing our back into the carriage. Find yourself in the start position, press away and fold. And roll the spine up, pressing down through the arms, thinking about not falling into the neck, but curling around the hip joints. Bend the two knees to the spine back down again and bring the heels in. I think that's plenty actually. We only need about three of those. Okay, so we're going to take our feet out of the straps now, one at a time, placing the feet onto the foot bar. Stretch the two legs out over the bar and just peel up. To sit in. And what we're going to do now is just some scoot up. So I like using a red and a yellow spring, uh, but you could just go with one red if you prefer. Um, or if you like it a little heavier, a red and a blue would be a challenge as well. So I'm going to choose a neutral scooter today. So first thing, just curl your toes against the shoulder block and then just have a sit back onto your foot so you really get that stretch through the bottom of your foot. The better the connection that you can make from your heel into the shoulder block, the better the work is going to be in the hips. So definitely worth it. And then take the hands onto the foot bar and just press gently the hands into the foot bar using the shoulder blades and then hover the hips off the bottom and feeling like you really sit your weight back and down. So this outer shin is as vertical as you can get it. If you're too far forward and your weight is in your hands and you wouldn't actually be able to lift your hands off, it's not quite the right spot and you're not really going to use um, the hips as much as you could be. So we want to sit way back, hovered over that back heel, keeping that shin vertical, and then we're pressing out and in, and out 
and in. So really feeling it's the hip hinge again. Pressing the thigh back behind yourself, keeping your chest up nice and proud so that the head and the chest isn't dropping forward. Let's go six and five. Really anchoring that back foot into the shoulder piece. Last three. And two. Last one. And then let's come in and we'll walk over to the other side. So again, just curl your toes. Have a little moment here. You might notice one foot's tighter than the other. And then once you feel like you've got that little stretch, make sure that your supporting knee there is in line with the hip. Stand your outside foot. Press gently into the arms, making sure those elbows aren't locking out, but you're getting that energy of the shoulder blades through the hands. Hover the bottom. Make sure you're sitting your weight back and down behind that vertical shin and then press and in, and press and in. So straight away for me, I can really feel my hips, my quads, all really working super hard. Keeping that chest lifted up, not traveling too far forward into the hands at all. Let's go five and four. That Back leg, just push that knee out to the side just slightly so it doesn't tend to go across your body line. Two, and one, and in we come. Okay, now we're going to move into up stretch. So we're going to do up stretch number one. Let's stick with the red and the yellow perhaps, or if you did a little stronger, we could go red and blue. And what you're going to do here is just have your heels halfway up the shoulder blocks. So you definitely don't want to be up too high. Halfway is perfect. And then you want to try and find that hinge again at the hip joint. So I've got pretty tight hamstrings and I do find that a challenge not to be too pressed up into the, the spine there. You want to try and sit your weight back, find that vertical line through the legs and that push again of the shoulder blades around the ribs through the hands. And then just press the carriage out from under you and then back to home and push and pull. So it's like a little hinge of your legs at that hip joint. And the pelvis is the highest, widest part of this equation. And then your trunk is just sloping downhill from there, letting gravity give the back of your body some release down through the front of your body. And then your front of your body will have something to pick back up again. Two. And one. Okay. Now we're going to take it into up stretch number two right away. So the shoulders stay where they are in space. You hinge at your hip joint. You hinge at your shoulder joint. And you come out to the front support. And then you're going to come back up to that start position. So hinge at the hips, hinge at the shoulders, let the ribcage tumble around the shoulder joint and back up. So keeping that going, we don't want to travel forward as we come out to that front support. So we want to use the power of our legs, the power of our pelvis to open those springs up and getting that opposition press of our upper body as well. Feels amazing. So let's do two more there. Feeling the rib cage and the pelvis always staying in alignment with each other so that that trunk is moving in one piece. One more, I think I got excited and did three. And then come all the way back up. Let's finish that sequence with elephant. So go down flat onto your two feet there. If you can, let's lift all 10 of the toes up. You've got a good view checking out the feet are still parallel. And again, try to get that beautiful hinge at the hip joint, really separating the sitting bones. Inhale, push out and in, and out and in. Feel the tips of the shoulder blades broadening around the side of the ribs, giving your pressure into the foot bar with your hands. And just feeling like a nice, easy hinge at the hips for three and two and one. And then coming down. All right, what we're gonna do is basic lunge now. So just take yourself onto 
You could either stay with that red and yellow or a red is perfectly fine as well. And we're going to stand to the side of the machine starting with the hip flexors stretch. So curl your toes against the shoulder block again. And unless you need the balance, let's just take the hands off the foot bar for the moment. And what I want you to do is locate that side of hip position again and really just go for a, a slight tuck under from that position, keeping the chest up nice and tall. And then push your back thigh to open the spring up. So you really want to think about your hips staying pivoted under and the thigh pressing back to open the spring up. And just breathe and hold there. And you don't want to sit into the back to get that spring and get that press. You really want to think of just pushing the leg away. And let's bring the hands onto the foot bar. Let the hips come back in space. And then we're going to pivot at the hips again to give you your hamstring stretch. Try and square up that pelvis. Check out where the two hips are in space. If you're looking for more stretch, you could flex your front, front foot there. And just try to keep the chest up nice and tall and proud so that if the head and the neck is bending forward, then probably your bottom is going to tuck under as well. You want the two ends of the spine to talk to each other. And let's come in and we'll swap over to the other side. So curl your foot against the shoulder block. Make sure that your kneeling knee is in line with the hip, not across your body. Come up. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about with that thigh pressing a little easier on this side. So feel the tuck under from way down at the hip joint there. And then just push the thigh back in space, not allowing yourself to lean. So really just feeling that position under. And then let's put the hands down and taking yourself back into the, the hamstring lunge. So trying to feel the two legs sliding back into the back of the hips. You can flex your foot if you need to. Get a little extra stretch there. Think of the little toe really drawing back around to the side of that knee. And then let's come all the way in. Perfect. Next thing we're going to move into is a side reach. Okay, so let's sit down. One red spring. And we're just going to have ourselves in a Z sit position. So settle down into your two hips. Make sure your hand on the foot bar is in front of the line of your shoulder, definitely not behind yourself. And we're going to inhale to tip over. And we're going to exhale to side bend all the way over to that right hand side. Inhale to come back out to the diagonal and exhale to come back in. Again, inhale to go to the tilt. Exhale to take the palm to the ceiling and side bend all the way over. Inhale, come back out and come back home. So keep that going. And what I'm thinking of, I'm just thinking about toppling all of my vertebrae over to that right hand side without any shift to the left in order to get there. So I'm using as much wingspan of my shoulder blades around my ribs into my upper back to give me the freedom through my upper back to get more side bend happening. So really reach your shoulder blades out through your two hands, broaden through that back. Let's do one more. Noticing whether you're tending to rotate your body downward as you side bend as well. So maybe just twist your chest slightly up to the ceiling and see how that feels. Oh, lovely. Okay, we're going to turn over and do the other side. You're going to have my back to you just for a moment here. Okay, so settle down into your two hips. And then take that left hand just in front of your shoulder. And making sure as well that you're not sitting in front of your sitting bones or back behind your sitting bones. You want to really find upright there. You're going to inhale to go to the diagonal. Exhale, turn the palm and really side bend to the left. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, close the springs up. All right, so keep that going. Feeling a little bit of anchor through that opposition hip. 
So reaching it back down into the carriage so that your spine's got somewhere to bend from. Really press that left shoulder blade out through that left hand. And remembering that your head is the top of your spine, so really let that get involved in the side bend too. Listen to the ceiling with your ear. Really important to keep that top arm really energized. Last two. So instead of letting that top arm come maybe further over and onto your head, just get more reach. And then that gives you more freedom to see if you can get more sideways range in your spine, which is the whole point of this exercise. The further we can side bend over, the bigger the stretch, and then also the greater the work when you return. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do now is just grab our box. We're gonna do some back extension. So just go and grab your box here. And we're gonna use it in the long box position. So we're gonna do pulling straps. Just stick it right in the middle there. Make sure that you've got the same amount of carriage poking out on either side. Let's pop the foot bone down. And we're going to stick with that same red spring. Okay, and to get onto this box, we put our hands to the front corners, stretch the leg, and then come down onto the hips. And have our chest just over the front edge of the box. And then hold onto these ropes as far up as you can manage. And the best thing to start with is just setting up your hips. So you want to think about that same pivot at the side of the hip joint directing your sitting bones downward into the front of your thighs and that being the heaviest component of your pelvis the whole way through this exercise. So once you've got that feeling of the sitting bones going down into the box, you can really stretch your two legs back from that feeling and feel then that your chest bone can reach forward in opposition. So starting in one beautiful long line here with the arms outstretched. So first of all, for our pulling straps, number one, we're not going to add the, the back extension straight away. We're going to do some where we just pull our arms back. So we inhale. We exhale to pull the fists down and back up to the top of the pelvis. Inhale to lower. And exhale, go down and back. And lower. So really thinking about that elongation of your sternum forward, your sitting bones going down into the box, and the power of my hips is so strong that I feel like I'm almost going to slide myself forward off the front edge of this box that I'm lying on. And that long energy then allows me the freedom to pull my arms and let my arms and my shoulders and my upper back do all this beautiful work. Last one. And now let's add a little bit of a thoracic back extension. So as I pull my arms, I'm going to think about reaching my sternum forward, lifting up through my face, and then pull the arms back as well. Inhale to lower long. Exhale, reach the sternum so far forward that you start to pick up your face. Reach the arms back. And lower. And again, let's do three. So it's not a huge movement. It's not about how high you can get. It's about how far forward that energy can feel like you're reaching yourself forward through the window of your shoulders to create the back bend. Last one. And pull. And coming on down. All right, fantastic. Let's put those straps down. We're gonna bring ourselves carefully off the box. We're just gonna pop that one away. We don't need it for any of the other exercises. Okay, so the next exercise we're gonna do is chest expansion. So we're gonna stick with that one red spring. We're gonna kneel onto our carriage and we've got a few options for position here. So the full exercise is having the toes hooked over the back edge of the carriage like I have them. And then we're going to be up in this high kneeling position, holding the straps out in front. If that feels a little scary balance wise to you or it doesn't feel right for your knees, you can do the same exercise sitting back on top of that long box that we just had with the feet resting on the shoulder blocks, uh, on the headpiece, sorry, and then pulling the straps that way. 
Or you can also do a different kneeling version where you just come further forward on the carriage and you stay sitting back onto the heels if that's something that your knees allows for you to do. So that's going to be a little easier as well. But let's do the full exercise and you feel free to modify it at home if you want to. So curl your toes back over the back edge of the carriage. Check out and make sure that your knees and your hips are in line with your, um, the same width as your pelvis. Reach forward, pick up those straps and just take care when you come up to the high kneeling position because that spring, the lightness of it can really throw your balance if you're not um, ready for it. So curl your toes, really hook into them. And then what you want to do again is set up these hips to support you. So you want to think about coming right to the front of your knees and think of the sitting bones again coming forward through the front of the thighs and then lifting up beautifully tall out of that hip work. And then you'll feel like you're ready, almost like you're kneeling on the edge of a cliff there. But there's so much hip work that we can inhale, pull the arms back, turn the head, turn the head, center the head, exhale to come back home. Inhale, pull the arms, turn the other way, turn the other way, and come home. So you alternate which direction you're turning your head in, and you feel as if the spine is so tall and long that your head is almost lifting up off your shoulders to turn. Keeping the eye gaze on the same horizon even as you turn your head, so we're not tilting up or down. Keep thinking of the palms facing towards each other and the arms stay really close to you, as if your arms become part of your trunk. And let's do one last one here. I've got a one-year-old and this neck and shoulder work is so hard but very rewarding. All right, let's pop that down. We're nearly there. We're going to do a skating preparation. So we're going to stick with that one red spring. Really important that we stand on the platform part of the reformer and then the carriage part so that we're ready for this unstable carriage. We're going to bend the two knees. And again, I want you to sit your weight right back and down behind your shins as vertical as you can get them, hinging at your hip joints rather than sitting into the back. And then we're just going to keep that right leg where it is and push the left leg to the side and bring it home. Push it to the side and bring it home. So really feeling as if those knees keep pressing open an imaginary elastic band around your thighs. You stay standing on the outer edge of the foot as well as heavy to the big toe. The hips are nice and level and we're getting that beautiful hinge again in the side of the hip. Let's do two. Let's do one. And then to transition, let's step our carriage leg back down onto the floor, then our platform, and then we walk over to the other side. So it's not very safe to change directions while you're standing up on top of the machine. So always best to walk around. Let's take platform foot up, carriage foot up, check out the outer edges of the feet being really parallel, find some heaviness into your big toe, but also that outer blade edge of the foot, and then take yourself into your hip hinge. So we really want to again feel like where weight is backing down into the front of that ankle joint. And then let's go right leg away and in. So there's several ways you can do the skating preparation. This one can also be done more upright with the knees bent. But this one is probably, this version here is closer to the full skating exercise. Good job, let's do four more there. Keep imagining a, an elastic band wrapped around the outer thighs and you're not letting the knee fall in. And let's do two, keeping the chest tall. Whew, I can definitely feel that beautiful top side of the hips working strongly there. Okay, I feel like we've covered all bases today. We're gonna finish with a really lovely standing roll down. So, just stand next to your machine there, feet hip distance apart, parallel feet. Check out that you're not leaning forward through your thighs, you've got that weight dropping in the front of the ankle. It should feel a lot more natural now. Stack the ribs on the pelvis, the head on the ribs. 
breath in. Breathe that cascade forward and down. Curl with the spine. Keep thinking continuous forward curl of the spine and the head, the spine and the head. Mobilize at the hips. Let's bend the knees and stretch the legs and then pivot the pelvis around the legs to get ourselves back up. Let's do it again. Breath in at the top. And breath out. Let's cascade forward and down. So again, not thinking of going backwards through an imaginary wall. We're thinking of just peeling off that wall. Bend at the hip joints. Bend at the knees and the ankles. Straighten the legs. Keep thinking continuous curl forward of the head and the neck. Roll the pelvis around the legs instead. Come all the way up to standing. And let's just have a little lift of the arms. So we're going to lift the arms, lift tall through the chest, and then back down. And last one, and lift. And coming back down. And I hope you're feeling as great as I am. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Bye.